Hello, this is another video, another one from for my series, reading old newspapers. First off, I have to say that my audio system, for some reason, it skips and breaks up and sometimes deletes, omits sections. So if that happens, I'm sorry. I don't re-edit it or I don't do it again. I just post it with the air. Lately it hasn't happened, so maybe the glitch is fixed, but uh, yeah, if that happens, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, basically I got a subscription to newspapers.com and we go through old newspapers. Okay, let's go to the page. Okay, let's look at, we do one newspaper, we take an old, old one that they have and then a newer one. United Kingdom I haven't done for a long time. And we'll do England. Now, where in England? Somewhere I know? Or just somewhere I don't know? Liverpool? I mean, I've heard of Liverpool. I think I've done Liverpool before. Maybe not. Oxford. That sounds interesting. Oxford, Jackson's Oxford Journal. Let's see, 1900. So let we do the older ones first. Let's do 1755. And we'll do, we're in May, so May. And they only have Saturdays. May 17, let's do. Four pages. Okay. Look at that, they have a nice little uh, design there. Back in the old days, was, that would be hard to do. Foreign Affairs. Oh, again. The, uh, the, there's an, it looks like an F, but it's really an S. Country news, let's try. Bristol, Bristol, Bristol. May 10th. At 2 o'clock yesterday morning, the, the press gangs, press gangs, boarded all the vessels from the new bridge to the old one. And notwithstanding, many of their hands had protections. They left only one man aboard most of them. The whole number impersided I don't know what that word is. Imper something was about a hundred and seventy. The consternation of the whole city was not less 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 than that of sailors at this unusual proceeding but at but in the afternoon it appeared that the gang had taken all without this distinction that they might pick out those who had no protections and lodged on board the vessels of such who had in order to secret themselves and after a proper examination the latter were discharged I don't know what I read there the press gangs press gangs from the new bridge to the old one I don't know what I read there Two pence, the price for the, right there, two pence. Okay. Let's see, oh, Paris. No. Brussels, Brussels. Okay, Brussels, May 2nd, right there. 
A dreadful fire was almost entirely consumed, confumed, consumed, the vi almost entirely consumed the village of Zo Zosire in Cambine, near the abbey of Tongerlo, 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 as there was a manufactory of cloth in the village, the loss, loss is very considerable. Three children perished? Perished in the flames? Which, be, which beginning at once in two different places gives room to inspect that they suspect that they were lighted by some incandescent Descent, incandescence, incandaries, incandaries, incendiaries, incendiaries. <laughs> I suck at reading. I don't know why I even do this. I suck at it. Hague, May 8th. All our letters from France agree that the best fleet, the Brest, Brest fleet is at sea. The breast? I don't know. Some say it. Fa some say it failed the twenty-sixth, and the others the thirtieth of last month. And we are likely, likewise, told that the commander of it, Mister Mister McNamara, will conv convoy the transports only as far as the. Azores, and leave them to proceed on their village with two or three men of war. Whilst he returns to Brest with the rest. Brest with the left. Rest. Again, I don't know what the heck I'm reading. Okay, let's move on to the next page. We gotta move. We gotta move. Gotta move. Country news. Birmingham, May 12th. On Friday morning, last last two men who call themselves James Smart and Samuel White, who had for some days been seen skulking about with two other men not taken, were app apprehended at Tamworth and suspicion on suspicion of robbing the highway robbing the highway they were both well mounted one with a dark brown gilding and the other on a large bay one ah. robbing the highway Newcastle May 10th Wednesday last returned to shield his majest majesty's sloop Captain O'Brien from Stockton where he had been to pre press seamen in passing summer Sunderland roads she bought brought to the vessel in order to in press hands but they had only had before got ashore on searching the hold he found a great quantity of brandy and etc of which he made a seizure that apply compensate comments compensates yeah for the disappointment of the sailors going off <laughs> the cargo was on Thursday brought up to this Custom House. I don't know. I don't know. Again, I don't know what I'm reading. The
Did they confiscate the the brandy? Is that what it was? Seized it. Seizure. Foreign affairs. Okay, let's move on to the next page. Announcements, advertisements. Hmm. Foreign affairs again. I'm not interested in this page. Let's go to the next page and then move on to this might be a shorter video. Poems. Okay, what the hell here? William Lawrence of Tem, in the county of Oxford, clockmaker, has now finished a fine large cl church clock for Newcastle upon upon time. New New Castle? No. Okay, of a hundred pounds value. Seven several gentlemen and workmen have been to see it and allow it to be the strong strongest and best piece of clock work ever yet finished it is now going in his shop and will continue there till the i don't know 11th of june when it will be carried to the place for sore said I don't know what that word is right there the F is an S right sore said To be sold at Brill in county in the county of Bucks. A freehold estate con consisting of a public house with good offices, a large garden, and nine acres of meadow ground will tim well timbered. Now in the occupation of Joseph Murr and Philip Scully, and let and let at an easy rent for is that a hundred or fourteen L a year, or is that four hundred and forty one? I think it's 14. For further particulars, inquire of H. Smith, attorney at S. By. By. Suffer. I don't know what that word is. Sounds good. Oxford, May 27th. All persons indebted to the estate of the late Thomas Lever of Oxford 
apothecary deceased as well as partnership it well in partnership with Samuel Malbon Malbon as before the partnership ended the first of January last Saf last past our des desired forth forthwith to pay their respective debts to Elizabeth Lever, the executor, executrix, or the or to Samuel Malbon, Malbon, at their house in the High Fleet, Oxford, High Street, Oxford, and all persons who have any demands on them are des des desired to send them in directly. Oh, he died. Deceased. Thomas Lever. Any debts? Pay them up. That's weird that they do that. Okay, let's do another paper. The same paper, but in an earlier year. A later year? No, earlier. I always get that mixed up. 1900. May. Saturday only. May 19th. 10 pages. Ooh. Jackson Oxford Journal. Advertisements. Ten pages. Price one D. What's a D? Well, I don't know. British money. One D. I know what pounds are. And pence. Well, I don't. I don't know what a pence is, but I know the, the pence is. But I don't know what a D is. Starts with a D. Okay. A lot of advertising. Beecham's pills, bilious and nervous disorders, sick headache, constipation, wind and pains in stomach, impaired digestion, disordered liver, and female ailments. Annual sales, 6 million boxes. Box 1S, I guess, and 1 half D and 2s 90 each with full direction right there art pots that looks interesting art pots if you want cheap but good fern pots for your plants and flowers call it at s king and sons we have a large and <laughs> sorry, sorry, and varied stock from two and a half D each. Is that a pound? <laughs> Is D a pound? The city stores. Strawberries. Mm, I like strawberries. To secure a crop of this delicious fruit. Grow the two best new sorts. Laxton's Monarch and Royal's Sovereign. I immense fruit, 2S per 100. Carriage paid. Sample 50 of each sort. Send carriage price for 2S 3D. Cheaper than by the thousand. Brickworth and Sons. Strawberry Grower Winchester Haunts. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let's move to the next page. Whoa. It's like a. Uh,
Kyrie's short one. Farmers, a, a visit to Denmark, right here. Farmers need to be the most stay-at-home people in the world, and would quote with approval that say, the saying of the wise man that a fool's eye are at the ends of the earth. But farmers have taken to travel lately. Some of the Essex daily di dairy farmers and farm farmeresses are off next week on a cheap trip to Denmark to study the farming successes of the Danes on the spot. They will return full of new ideas about cooperative butter factories, bacon factories, creameries, cattle markets, and municipal slaughterhouses. Perhaps some of the new ideas may be put into practice, but it is now wonderful how slowly the practices of one country are transformed and take root in those of another. Interesting. Fact finding mission. That's a long one. I'm trying to look for short ones, little short ones. Oh, advertising. Okay, anyways. Now let's go to the next page. Gotta keep moving. Whoa, it's just all writing. Oxford City Court. What happened? Alleged extensive robberies by boys. Cecil Brown, age 15, Aaron Boy, 3, <laughs> Observa Observ Observatory Street, Frank, Frank Gibbs, 14, Schoolboy, 27, Woodstock Road, Frederick Scherner, Scher 12, Aaron Boy, 5, Alfred Street, and Ralph Shermer, page boy, at, of the same address, were charged with being, uh, being concerned together in breaking and entering on or about the 14th Ultima, Alt? I don't know what Alt is. Number 34, Little Clarendon Street and stealing about 1S shilling, I guess, in bronze and six boxes of pens together with the value of three S's, shillings, I guess. The property of George Tyrell, also with breaking into, breaking into and entering, or on or about the 15th alt, the Merchant College Credit Cricket Pavilion, and stealing there from two dozen cricket balls, two bats, six stumps and pad, and a quantity of cigarettes valued Oh, there's it is six to pounds to twelve shillings, and with and with breaking into and entering New College Pavilion and stealing therefrom three balls valued twelve shillings. Brown was further charged with stealing from the hall of number two twelve Banbury Road, St. Gillis, on the twentieth alt. A black and gold frame containing a quantity of Bird's eggs, valued 15 shillings, the property of Charles Derby. Okay. Mr. Andrew Walsh appeared for the prisoners Sh Schumer. Schumer. George Tyrell, bookseller, said he looked up his promises on the 14th at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. He found the doors of the library all opened and some coppers strewn about. On Wednesday, the 19th, he was shown a key which fitted, fitted 
his door front door but but the value he put the value at three shillings okay anyways okay petty crimes <laughs> Queen's chocolate. That's interesting. That sounds interesting. The following extracts from a letter written by Mr. Harvey Alderman, Alderman, now serving as a trooper in the Border Mounted Rifles, may prove interesting to some of our readers. Highlands Natal, April 9th, 1900. Dear, my dear sister, Many thanks for your letter uh, of March 8th, which I received this morning. Now you speak of the Queen's chocolate. Well, I am afraid we poor beggars who are shut up in Lady Smith will get none of it, as it was all given away to the fellows just landed. Anyhow, we are going to write to the papers about it, as it was really meant for us fellows in the field before Christmas. On Saturday twelve of us on Saturday twelve of us were sent down to Maritzburg to attend the funeral of our colonel which took place yesterday morning, Palm Sunday. The pipe and baca mother sent me came in splendidly. Tabaka the baca. It's the pipe and tobacco. It's she just said it's short form at baca. Mother sent me, came in splendidly, so so does the cardigan. I used it to sleep in at night. This is the coldest place in Natal at night, and just in reverse in the in the daytime. We shall not be sorry to get ship get shifted from here. I have just finished cleaning my tackle up. First time since I left Ladysmith. Our rifles are inspected every other day, so we are obliged to keep them clean. I saw in yesterday's paper that the Yolmanry, Yolmanry had had a smack at the Boers in the Free State, in which engagement and I engagement I see at an Oxford man, Captain C Cecil Boyle was killed. But the Boers, Boers got the worst of it. They had only 60 taken prisoners. I cannot understand how it is our fellows are falling into the trap, into traps. Two more companies of the Irish rifles have been taken prisoners. I don't think there are many Dutch now in Natal. They, are, they have all gone to the Free State to try to surround Roberts. I have made up my mind to put in a few more months, and as soon as we get discharged, I shall come right away home. Your affectionate brother, H. O. Alderman. Ah, oh. he's at war. Is there a war? I don't know. There must be a war in nineteen hundreds. They they said that what did they say? The Boers. The Boer Wars? Is that what it is? The Boer War? I don't know. Let's move on. Cricket. More about the war, I guess. The war. Occupation of Kroonstad. Triumphal entry of Lord Roberts. Driving the Boers out of Natal. That's what they were just talking about, the boy, the, 
the guy, Alderman. Capture of the Bigarsburg, Bigarsburg. British invasion of the Transvaal, Transvaal. Transvaal or Transvaal? Let's read it, I guess. On Thursday, it was reported that British forces had entered the Transvaal and that General Hunter, who at one time was supposed to be out, out of the way to assist May, May Viking, had planted the Union Jack at Christiana, Christiana, from which the Boer retired as he entered, while Methune reached Hopstead 12 miles further without meeting the enemy. The, the, gen the General Rundle was in occupation of Nequaltling, Neck, and Moderport. General Buller, who was also reported to be at Newcastle, which should give us control of the railway of Pretoria. Okay, it sounds like they're doing good. I'm not going to read the whole thing. A lot about the war, I guess. Okay, let's move on. Oh, help wanted page. What do they want these days? Sale by auction. That's a big thing back then. Auctions. Let me read one of these. Sale by auction. Mr. Paxton and Holiday. Mr. Paxton and Holiday, FSAI, FSI, auctioneer, state, estate agents, agricultural timber, and general value, valuers and surveyors. Biggester, Oxon. Established upwards of a half a century. Estates managed, surveying in all its branches, sales and valuation, valuations of all kinds of property undertake, undertaken to reasonable terms in any part of the country. Offices also at Banbury and Chipping Norton. Chipping Norton Junction Stock Sale Next Monday, May 21st, Keck and Son will sell by auction in above in the above sale yard, prime fat and st store stock, etc. Numerous in entirees of hand. Others most respectfully solicited. What that? I don't even know what they're selling. Prime fat. Oops, sorry. I my clicker is so sensitive to right click it by accident. Anything else? Ooh, three thousand pounds. That's a lot of money in those days. Three thousand dollars, three thousand pounds to invest in mortgages or any other good securities. At four and a half percent, applications received in confidence to the address to Syntax Journal Office, 24 Queen Street, Oxford. That's pretty good. To let. To let with immediate possession at Windlebury near. 
Kester, by Kester, oxen, a comfortable dwelling house with butcher's shop, gardens, orchard, yard, and pr premises. Also a cottage and garden. Apply, Miss Jacks, Jack Jakeman, Wendelberry, by Ch by S Sester, by Sester. Gun, for sale, gun, 12 bore double breech loader. New, top lever, extension rib, left choke, front action locks, light on trigger, walnut, pistol stock, etc. Government proof, very fine finish, good killing gun, 50, 50 shillings, I guess. Approval. No, we don't have to go through that. Oh, look at this. Large poles for sale. Suitable for fencing and rustic work. Pigot? Pigots for, for hams. Uh, what's a pigot? Small and mild. Wholesale and retail. Oh, look at this. New theater. Oxford. Tonight, Friday, and tomorrow, Saturday, at 2 o'clock and 8 o'clock, The Only Way, from Dickens' Tale of Two Cities, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, May 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, at 8 o'clock, Miss Ada Blanche and Company, in the successful musical comedy, The Telephone Girl, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, May 24th, 25th, and 26th, at 8 o'clock, Miss Emma Hutchinson's Company, in the Great West End Success, The Tyrant of Tears. Ah. Shows, theater shows. Okay, let's move on. Theater fire, that sounds interesting. Theater fire. Ben Greed's company burned down. An exciting, exciting scene occurred at High Street, Chatham, on Wednesday night through an outbreak of fire at the Theater Royal. Theater Royal. Royal, Royal. The alarm was no sooner given than the flames extended to and burst out about through burst burst through the roof and in a short time the main building was burnt out. The company in occupation of the theater was Ben Greets Greats Great Ruby Company, which had just finished a matinee performance, the audience having left the theater only about ten minutes. The company lost the whole of its value and extensive scenery and properties, and the actors and actresses all their dresses. A stagecoach stage coat worth 200 pounds belonging to the local job master, which was used in one of the scenes, was destroyed. The theater had only been open about 10 months. The property was insured, but the indirect loss arising from the fire will be very serious. That's too bad. Police court. What's that? Before the the mayor, E. Chamberlain, Esquire, Borough Police Court, Monday, stealing a waterproof and umbrella. John Nichols, Farringdon Burke's laborer, was brought up in custody, charged with stealing a waterproof umbrella and a walking stick head from the house of Mr. G. E. Clements, Marketplace, Henley, on 12th, May 12th, valued one pound, two shillings, six D. What's a D? I don't know. 
prisoners who prisoner who said he had been on the drink and rec 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 recollected nothing of the affair was committed to take his trial at the Oxford Assize to be held at the beginning of next month. He was drunk. He doesn't remember. Okay, let's go to the next page. Almost oh, a little thing here. Some prize animals. Hereford Bull, first prize. Lord Conventry Grimm. Lords. You know what a lord is? Someone who owns land in uh, in in England is considered a lord. That's all you need to be a lord, which is still hard because you still have money to own land. But I thought lord was like a higher position. But you're a landlord. Anyways, I learned that watching TMZ. Actually, <laughs> some guy told me that the agriculture show record attendance. Ooh, let's read butter. Butter. The entries in the three butter classes totaled 39, and it was stipulated that the whole of the exhibit must be the product of a dairy direct and not be not from a shop. Mr. G. Herbert Morell, MP, was the winner in the class of three pounds of butter made of cream from cows other than Channel Island cow, ca cattle. Mr. F. C. Taylor, who was second, taking the champion for the best exhibit of a tenant farmer. Mr. Morell also was also successful in the class for butter made from of cream from Channel Island breeding only. The general quality of the products in the in the several classes were pronounced excellent, and the ex exhibition was. A feature of interest and attraction on each day. Interesting. Eggs. There, eggs right here. There were but two classes for eggs, white and brown, respectively, with 19 exhibitors, and the specimens shown were notice noticeably for their size and evenness, and caused the judge some amount of trouble in making his decision. Honey. There was again a paucity of entries in the honey classes. The whole of the prizes in which were given by Mr. G. Hubbard Morell, MP, Mr. H. W. Seymour, Henley on Thames, secured first Hen Henley on Thames secured first honors in the classes for six sections of comb honey, glass and or extracted or run honey, and beeswax. And in the other classes, Mr. S. Hancock of with Witham Mill won with glass super of comb honey. Okay. In both color and flavor the exhibitions were of a highly satisfactory description okay move to the next page okay let's go to the next page Council. Oh, fatal bicycle accident. Deddingham? Get Deddington? Fatal bicycle accident. Mr. George Coggins, corner of North Oxen, held an inquest at the Unicorn Hotel on Friday on the body of Arthur Wheaton of the post office
open remark alluded to the terrible nature of the accident, to the esteem and respect in which deceased deceased and his family were held, and the great grief caused not only to his immediate relative, but also to all of who knew him. Mr. John Wheaton, father of the deceased, disposed. I have been postmaster of De Dettingham, Dettington since 1866. My son was 39 years old years of age last birthday. He assist oh shoot. He assisted me in my postal work and was an ex experienced cyclist. He started for North Aston on Wednesday morning after having had a cup of tea and some bread and butter with about a dozen letters to deliver. There were in his side pocket. He had a small can strapped to in front of the bicycle in which he used to bring home milk. About seven o'clock, George Beasley came to me and said that Arthur had had an accident on Deaton, Deaton, Deaton Hill. They had sent for Miss Dr. Jones and I immediately went down to Miss with Mr. Beasley. I found deceased I found deceased lying on the right hand side of the road and someone holding him. He was not conscious. I wiped his eye face his face. There was blood on the mouth. He was bought, brought home in a cart. Dr. Jones ha came up from his house with us and su and sub subsequently made an examination. He attended him until death. My son leaves a widow and two children. Joseph Callow Carter disposed. On Wednesday morning I was walking near Mr. Tucker's about 18 minutes to 7. I saw deceased on his bicycle coming from the back pre premises of his father down the lane. He said good morning Joseph and I wished him good morning. He had a can on the handlebar. He rode in the direction of Hudson Street. It was a wet morning. The deceased was not riding fast. Dr. Jones disposed. I knew the deceased well. I accompanied the deceased father with the cart containing the deceased to his house at the post office. The deceased was profoundly unconscious. I made an, uh, an examination and found radiating fractures, four in number, involving injury to the right ear, to the eye socket, right side, to the back of the throat, and a smaller one on the back of the head to the occupant. Occupant. <laughs> That's not right. spelled right. And one to the left running up to, but not involving the left ear. I was in, it was impossible to do anything to preserve life and he was never recovered consciously and died at 640 on Thursday morning. There was homage homage from the hemorrhage hemorrhage I don't know from the nose and ears and an escaped of brain fluid. I don't want to read anymore. Okay, let's read the last page. The markets. There's nothing interesting. I'm going to end this. Oh, deaths. Oh, they have a death. Marriages, birth, and death. I'll, sure, I'll do one of each. Foster, May 16th at 48 Madison Road, 
Herringay, London, the wife of Alfred J. Foster, of a daughter. Okay, marriage. Russell Woolgrove, May 12th, at the Baptist Chapel, King's Sutton, King's Sutton, by the Reverend J. Churchill, James, thir third son of Edward W. Russell, of Mas Marston, St. Lawrence, to Claudia, Claudia, Emma, only daughter of T. Wood Woolgrove, of Little Two. Woodgrove. Woolgrove. And Russell. Son of Edward W. Russell. Third son. And deaths. Here we go. Hubbard. May 10th. In South Africa. William Hubbard. Royal Engineers. And Lower High Street. Temp. Tem, age 21 years. Oh, that's too bad. He was a royal engineer. That's pretty cool. Okay. I think that's it. I'm calling it. Okay, that was fun. That's quite interesting. Okay. Did we learn anything? No. Did we waste time? Yes. Interesting. The p things that they put in there in the newspaper seem so trivial, but yeah, yeah. Okay, signing off. Remember, live your life and see what happens. Okay, later.